Most weekends, I dive into another world full of life, fish circling around me, checking me out. Under dense seaweed, I spot power, juvenile crayfish, and colorful marine life. Hidden below the surface, the seaweed forests provide for us. They are the nursery grounds and habitats for our favorite seafood species. They protect our coast from erosion and they even provide the oxygen we breathe. We take it for granted while below the surface, the forests die. Right under our eyes, without anyone taking notice. As a keen diver, I have witnessed the change and I have hope. We care for what we can see and we know what we need to do to save our seaweed forests and us. We have done it before. Wellington is the only capital city in the world with a fully protected no-take marine reserve. Heavily fished marine life has come back and there's incredible beauty and bounty. New Zealand is an ocean nation. The ocean is embedded in our culture, history and identity. And most of us live within five kilometers of the coast. I grew up in Bavaria, landlocked. And now the ocean is the biggest part of my life. Our marine environment is incredibly diverse. Many of the species only live here in New Zealand and even more are still to be discovered. We have over a thousand seaweed species alone. Delicate small reds, punchy green greens and sturdy large browns the trees of the ocean. One of my favorites is giant kelp. Giant kelp grows in Wellington Harbor and around our coast, and it grows so tall that it builds underwater rainforests. Imagine an intertwined root system, a thick floating canopy on the surface, and a lush understory made up of other seaweeds home to hundreds of species and the foundation of a food web that includes penguins, dolphins, and us. We depend on the ocean for our physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. At the same time, most of us don't get to see or experience the life and beauty in our own blue front yard. I love taking people on dives and pointing out marine life, seeing the excitement and the connection forming beyond the surface is so rewarding. To make the underwater world accessible for everyone on shore, I started using immersive technology and creative ways of visual storytelling. Next time you walk along Tapu Teranga Marine Reserve on Wellington's south coast, look out for small QR codes and scan in to discover some of my favorite spots and species on video on your device without getting wet. <laughs> or join me at an event in town or at the coast and take a fully immersive dive in the reserve on our VR headsets. Not all is well. Fishing pressure, sedimentation and nutrient inputs, resource extraction, and the effects of human-induced climate change are putting pressure on our marine ecosystems. All around New Zealand's coast, seaweed forests and other habitats disappear. But documenting the scale of change underwater and communicating the impact on us is difficult. Some changes are so slow that we start taking them for granted. And it even has a name, it's called a shifting baseline. 
in places where our parents and grandparents have seen an abundance of large fish in thriving underwater forests, we now get excited about a few small fish in between rocks. Those few small fish and rocks become our reference of what is normal. Places that provided food for entire communities are slowly turning into empty cupboards without anyone taking notice. With pressures adding up, the speed of change is accelerating. We are now reaching tipping points where change is drastic and fast. Over the last couple of years, I've seen significant areas of seaweed forests disappear from Wellington Harbor along kilometers of coastline. I've documented and experienced the loss, meter by meter and month after month. It is devastating to watch and I felt angry, sad and upset. What has happened? We have created an imbalance in the food web by overfishing on species that forage and predate on sea urchins, our kinna. Snapper, blue cod, moki, crayfish, and other species that keep the balance in the ecosystem have ended up on our plates. Urchins usually hide from predators in between cracks and crevices and under rocks. But without predators, the urchins have nothing to fear. So they start moving onto the reef and actively forage for seaweed. Without limitations by predation and with increasing numbers, the urchins overgraze and quickly turn entire seaweed forests into barren areas of rock. Only the urchins remain, starving, sick, and undesirable to eat. We have created an imbalance in the food web that is now destroying the habitats and nursery grounds of the seafood species we so desire. But I have hope. We know that without grazing pressure, seaweed forests can grow back and marine life will return, including our valued seafood species. My observations from a declining kelp forest in Wellington Harbor have inspired an EV-led sea urchin removal and seaweed restoration project. I've coordinated over 200 volunteers and together we removed over 12,000 urchins from just 250 meters of coastline. After five months, I could start seaweed growing back. Five months. A year on, the seaweed story is over knee high and giant kelp is towering again over the reef. <laughs> so what have we learned? If we tally up the urchin numbers in Wellington Harbour or across all of the coast of New Zealand, it becomes a daunting task. We can't remove the urchins by hand. There are too many and they reproduce so fast that they would repopulate our reefs within a few years. We need more and bigger fish and crayfish in the ocean to keep eating those urchins. To achieve that, we have to start protecting the nursery grounds and habitats and build resilience and diversity into our marine ecosystems. Less than 1% of New Zealand's ocean is fully protected. 
together with the international community, we committed to 30% protection. That has to include representative habitats close to shore in harbors and estuaries. Besides improving fisheries management and limiting pollution, we have to start looking after our seafloor. That's where most species live. Seabed degradation has to stop, including bottom trawling and seabed mining. Imagine we would lose our native forests around Wellington. People would be out in front of parliament protesting and demanding swift and effective action. It's our actions on land and our decisions that cause the collapse of our marine ecosystem. It's our choice. And we urgently need better choices from decision makers across parties and agencies. We are bringing back kiwi birds to the hills of Wellington at a pace and scale that is transformative. We need to do the same with a vision for a thriving marine environment full of life. The oceans provide for us, and it is the foundation for an important economic sector. There is a drive worldwide to develop a regenerative blue economy, and New Zealand is uniquely placed to take this further. With the right signals and regulatory foundations, we can benefit from international investments and innovations. We can attract investment into our regions to create regenerative marine businesses and resilient communities with sustainable food sources and well-paid jobs. It is up to each and every one of us to create the momentum for that change. Take a leap for the ocean, become an ocean champion. Talk to your friends and family about what's happening below the waves. Tell them that you care and that you want to see positive change. We have to take notice. Explore your course, find out about the changes in your blue neighborhood and support local marine projects. We have to stop pollution, including sedimentation and nutrient inputs, that's a given. It's time to step it up and put the health and resilience of our marine ecosystems at the center of decision-making. Talk to your member of parliament, your local decision-makers, and your community leaders. Ocean outcomes have to be featured in decisions on land and marine management. Everyone can be an ocean champion. I'm scuba diving and filming 70 kilometers of Wellington's coast to show what happens below the waves and to spark curiosity and change. If we create momentum for change and act, we can see significant positive change in a short period of time. We can grow back thriving seaweed forests full of life and valued seafood species right here in Wellington Harbour and all around New Zealand's coast. Thank you.